This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Upstart. Back on August 4th, 2019, the Twitter main character for the day was a guy named William McNabb, who asked a simple question. The United States was once again dealing with the aftermath of a horrific mass shooting, and country singer-songwriter Jason Isbell had posted the following. If you're on here arguing the definition of assault weapon today, you are part of the problem. You know what an assault weapon is, and you know you don't need one. Now, that tweet received the you know, typical onslaught of replies that you would expect from the pro-gun and anti-gun people, but William McNabb responded with this question. Legit question for rural Americans. How do I kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into my yard within three to five minutes while my small kids play? Man, Twitter does slap sometimes. It really does. Now, it's hard to really pinpoint what about this specific tweet made it go viral. Um, maybe it's this like specificity of the 30 to 50 feral hogs appearing in William's yard uh, and being able to decimate them within three to five minutes. An average of 40 hogs in four minutes. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah, 10 hogs every minute or so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, maybe it's simply the absurdity of the mental image of a literal army of wild pigs invading a man's yard and endangering the lives of his children while he watches, powerless, without his AR-15. Or the idea that in all the other countries that also have feral hogs, but not widespread gun ownership, people must just constantly be getting killed by murderous packs of boars. Must be. Also, the mental image of uh, a person who is dealing with a feral hog attack where dozens of feral hogs are coming at them <laughs> while children are also yeah. playing in the yard. Get down. Yeah. Well, So while you're taking out the 30 to 50 wild hogs, you have to avoid the children at the same exact time. You're using your kids as bait. But you would obviously be able to do that if you were properly trained to operate course, that weapon. Of course. Because as we all know, gun ownership, uh, you know, it is a right. They don't but just gun responsibility, these... <laughs> that's up to you. They don't just hand these things out. They, they give them to people that know what they're doing, right? Actually, they do just hand them out. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, in any case, all the city folk on Twitter had a good long laugh about this for a, a day or so before obviously moving on to the next thing. But in the two years since the 30 to 50 feral hogs in three to five minutes, William McNabb, has actually been somewhat vindicated. And, and even on this show, like, since then, we've seen that, uh, I mean, I don't think you need an assault weapon to uh, take down dozens of them, but the, it... But you might someday. It is inaccurate to say that feral hog attacks don't happen. Yeah, they are. They actually happen. They are a real menace. Mm -hmm. Especially in, uh, like, boy, Texas, they have, like, you can... Well, there you can go hunt them on like reserves yeah. or whatever. You can hunt the them. Yeah, I think they. I think it's one of the few animals in Texas where there's you, you can just shoot them. It, there's, it's free. Uh, we free are range. we are slightly agreeing with William McNabb in the fact that we have come to find out that yes, feral hog attacks are real, yeah. especially in America, and uh, feral hogs are indeed scary. Yeah, and they're just a general menace. Yeah, uh, and I I want to be clear here that despite being a lifelong city boy myself. I have taken the threat of feral hogs seriously for a very long time uh, due to working on it as a low-level uh, post-production assistant on the 2011 Discovery Channel series Hogs Gone Wild, <laughs> which ran for one single season and has been mostly forgotten except for a few clips on YouTube. Uh, every day I would come into work and watch hours upon hours of raw footage of feral hogs absolutely <laughs> wreaking havoc on rural properties all across the United States. They're hungry, they breed like crazy, and they can in fact mess you up real bad if they so choose. Um, they're also literally an invasive species to this continent, just like the murder hornets, uh, just like those those bugs that the city of New York wants everyone to step on. Mm -hmm. They're they're not supposed to be here, and they cause a lot of problems. Yes. Also on that show, uh, they they would edit the episodes so that they they'd catch the hogs, and then they're like, all right, it's dead. But I, for the actual footage, it would take ten to fifteen minutes for these hogs to bleed out, and they're screaming the whole time. It was pretty traumatizing stuff. I thought it would take three to five minutes for them to do. That. Clearly. Maybe it just felt like that long. <laughs> yeah. So the threat of boars is definitely serious. All right. We can all admit that, right? Yeah. Though maybe not, you know, 30 to 50 feral hogs in three to five minutes serious. And we have had plenty of boar news in the two years 
since William McNabb's tweet. He he put this problem on our radar, or at least re-added it for you. Mm -hmm. U.S. wildlife officials were preparing for an onslaught of feral hogs crossing the border from Canada. A feral hogs finding and destroying a stash of cocaine worth $22,000 also happened. A Texas woman getting attacked and killed by feral hogs just outside her workplace. Hogs stealing a naked German man's laptop at a nudist park. Hogs emerging from the sea and terrorizing German beachgoers. Hogs cornering an Italian woman in a grocery store parking lot and stealing her groceries. And of course, the presence of radioactive hybrid terror pigs living in the Fukushima nuclear exclusion zone. The only positive hog story that we've seen was that Serbian cave hermit a few months back who, whose best friend is a huge 440 pound boar that he rescued as a piglet. Imagine seeing this guy emerge with this gigantic boar following him. It's like a video game. Yeah, this guy, that, that hermit is awesome. Yeah. And and he got vaccinated. Responsible hermit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to spread COVID to his beloved 440-pound Exactly. Boar. <laughs> uh, anyway, in our latest boar incident, now uh, things have gone even further than previously foreseen. That was all child's play because the feral hogs are no longer satisfied with terrorizing everyday folk. They have moved on to terrorizing Grammy award-winning multi-platinum selling musical artists. And not only that, they have attacked the best-selling Latin female musical artist of all time, Shakira. Wow. Who at just five foot two is virtually defenseless <laughs> in the face of the feral hog menace. Wow, that is short. Yeah, she's very small. Uh-huh. Uh, luckily, her hips don't lie. Their hips are very low to the ground. That's, they they yeah, do not lie. Proportionately, yeah. yes. But yeah, luckily for Shakira, these hogs, they weren't looking for murder on this day. Just a little bit of robbery. Hey, here's the BBC. Pop superstar Shakira says she was the victim of a random attack by a pair of wild boars while walking in a park in Barcelona with her eight-year-old son. The Colombian singer said the animals attacked her before seizing her bag and retreating with it into the woods. She shared her bizarre tale in a series of Instagram stories on Wednesday. Holding the now recovered but torn bag towards the camera, she said, Look at how two wild boars which attacked me in the park have left my bag. They were taking my bag to the woods with my mobile phone in it, the singer continued. They've destroyed everything. She then turned to her son, whose father is the Barcelona footballer Gerard Piquet, and said, Milan, tell the truth. Say how your mummy stood up to the wild boar. You did, mummy. It was so, it was so scary. It was beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a wild story. Yeah. And yeah, if you know anything about Shakira, you know that despite this seeming like a, a bit of a tall tale, her hips do not lie. But do her lips lie? I don't know. The bag, she did show the bag and it looked pretty messed up. Oh, was anything missing from the bag that she might have had insured for a high amount of money? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but while Shakira got lucky this time, when all the boars wanted was her purse, who's to say that she'll be as lucky the next time? Yes. When they're out for blood. It might be easy for you to say that you don't need to carry an AR-15 with you when you go down to the park with your kid, but Shakira is proof that you do indeed need to be armed to the teeth at all times. Because, this would have never happened in America. Yeah, Feral Hawk can and will attack at any given opportunity. And they don't care how famous you are. Yes. So, Shakira, please come back to the safety of the United States where we can protect you from these wild hogs. Yeah, come back to America, Shakira. We've got an AR-15 waiting for you. Yes. You can go walk anywhere you want without fear of any sort of attack. You hear that oinking? You get down, you take a knee, draw a bead. And you can bye, bye, take piggy. out 30 to 50 in a very short amount of time. Well, not in California. Actually, no, we got the magazines back. They uh, they ruled that shit unconstitutional. But before it was like, we had little tiny mags. It was like five <laughs> hey, How many boars are you gonna take out that? Four? Yeah. Stupid. Yeah, you get attacked by a boar in California. And you're like, bing, 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 bing. Oh God, I need another magazine. My magazines are this big. And then you're dead. You're mm -hmm. dead. I need a fucking banana clip like they had in Vietnam. <laughs> yes. The the Viet Cong had in the Vietnam yeah. on their AKs. I, I need 60 I rounds. I take out my boars with napalm. Yeah. <laughs> and they eat them afterwards. Yeah. Yes. It tastes chemically. I like it's it. It's not healthy. No. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, you know what's even scarier than feral hogs? Ninjas. Uh, they're obviously a lot more rare than feral hogs, though. Uh, but occasionally, a ninja will attack. And when it does, even the most highly trained opponent is in for a hell of a fight. And uh, that is what happened recently at uh, Inyo Kern Airport, a military airfield 100 miles north of Los Angeles, where some special operations soldiers in an elite unit known as the Night Stalkers encountered a lone ninja. Just one. Not 30 to 50. Just mm. one. Did these soldiers, some of whom are the most well-trained fighters in our armed forces, make quick work of the ninja attacking them? 
Not exactly. Let's read from the incident report that was posted on Instagram. Between 0100 and 0200 on 18 September 2021, Staff Sergeant Redacted was <laughs> sitting outside of the administration building of the hangar at Inyo Kern Airfield smoking a cigarette when an unknown person wearing full ninja garb to include a katana sword walked up to Staff Sergeant. The person wearing the ninja garb stated, do you know who I am? Staff Sergeant replied, no. The unknown person then asked, do you know where my family is? Staff Sergeant again stated, no. At this point, the person in ninja garb began to slash as Staff Sergeant, striking his phone and his knee and leg. Staff Sergeant immediately began running through the parking lot, trying to evade the unknown person. Staff Sergeant jumped the fence and entered the admin building. Staff Sergeant and Captain Redacted began locking all the doors and calling 911. The person in ninja garb was kicking and punching doors and windows. Unknown person left and returned a few minutes later with a large block of asphalt, which he threw through the window of the admin building, striking Captain Redacted. The unknown person then left and was arrested elsewhere. The local police arrived and took statements from involved persons. Staff Sergeant Redacted received multiple stitches to the leg and Captain Redacted received multiple stitches to the head. Both individuals are cleared to return to duty. So, yeah, at first glance, I mean, this sounds like bullshit, right? Yes. The U.S. Special Forces getting attacked by a ninja and running and hiding and calling 911 about the whole thing. It just sounds ridiculous. Yeah. I, I was thanking them for their service before this, but now I don't know. They are the elite of the elite. Obviously, you shouldn't believe just anything that you read on the Internet, but the official newspaper of the U.S. military, Stars and Stripes, confirmed that the incident did, in fact, happen as described. In fact, they quote one of the 911 call logs. 26 spec op military members doing training at the airport, hunkered down in a hangar wondering where help is. So who would win? 26 tier one operators or one sneaky boy? Yeah. 26 of Ninja. them. Ninja. I hate that when I was when I was doing this, I, I, I googled Ninja and uh, it's all just that guy now. Yeah. Even the Wikipedia page that shows up as the top result. It's for fucking Tyler Blevins and not, and not the ancient... Uh, not even really ancient, but the, you know, the classical art of uh, sabotage and subterfuge mm -hmm. from feudal Ch uh, Japan. There you go. Almost said China. Careful. Mm -hmm. yep. Although they did base a lot of their, uh, a lot of their teachings on uh, texts from China, much like a, a lot of Japanese culture from that time was sort of filtered uh, from Chinese uh, works in their own culture. Yourself, I, I don't fine. need to. Yeah, you, you get it. <laughs> but anyway, you, uh, if you want to read about any of that shit, you got you to gotta scroll past Tyler Blevins to get to it. Fucking bullshit. Anyways, while it's still unclear if this person in ninja garb was actually trained in the art of ninjutsu, Stars and Stripes has now released more information about the incident. And uh, yeah, it only raises more questions, honestly. Non-lethal rounds failed to stop a sword-wielding man dressed as a ninja who authorities say injured two special operations soldiers, then brandished his blade at sheriff's deputies last month at a California airport, according to authorities. When deputies arrived on the scene, they found some 26 special operations soldiers training at the airport hunkered down in the hangar after an attack by a man dressed as a ninja, Ridgecrest Police Department records show. The suspect, identified as 35-year-old Gino Rivera, was booked for attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, brandishing a weapon, brandishing a weapon with the intent to resist or prevent an arrest, vandalism, and or obstruct slash delay a, a peace officer in the discharge of their duties, according to the Kern County Sheriff's Office. When Ridgecrest police responded to the scene, Rivera refused to follow commands and brandished the sword at deputies, authorities say. Quote, non-lethal rounds were deployed, but were ineffective, the Sheriff's Office said in Friday's statement. Rivera ran and continued to disobey commands. He dropped the sword after a taser was deployed. My one said. weakness. That's how you take down a ninja. Yeah. Electric shock. This guy, he scared some of our nation's toughest special operators into a hangar. The cops showed up. He's like, what, presumably deflecting their... Yes, their yeah. uh, the bullets are going back at the cops at this it, point. Yeah, <laughs> with his, his Japanese steel. Yeah. And uh, Did yeah. he do any smoke bombs? I don't know. He might have. We can't see him! He's gone! It's the thing about ninjas. They're, they're trained to fight in the night. And they're very quick. They are. Mm -hmm. uh, so this Gino Rivera, if that's even his real name, is looking at some serious charges here for what he did. But you got to wonder, can any prison actually hold? <laughs> I guess as long as the, the guards have tasers, since that seems to be his ultimate weakness. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, as this case gets uh, sorted out more, uh, this ninja can explain his actions and motivations here because on paper, the idea of attacking special forces troops with a katana in the middle of the night seems foolish, even suicidal. I would try it. 
would not. I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to do it at night. Yeah, I mean, ninjas ninjas fighting in the daytime, uh, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. But ninjas at night, I mean, that is their, uh, they call it the ninja hour. Also a great uh, Halloween costume for this year if you want to stay masked up while you're trick-or-treating. Yeah. Without just having it be a paper, like a plastic mask or whatever that you'd get. Although at this point, it's like dressing up as a ninja, even on Halloween, I feel like the cops are just going to be like, hey, you trying to rob someone? No, I'm a ninja. Hiya! Yeah. Bye. And then you throw a smoke bomb. And you, 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 yeah. You run away. Yes. Ugh. But speaking of costumed figures that strike fear into the hearts of even the most capable and dangerous men, we've got some more clown news for you. Okay. The last weekend we discussed a recent incident in Singapore in which a private school advertised its services using clowns. And that scared the shit out of parents and children and triggered an official response from the local police. We're sorry. It was the latest demonstration that this is a terrible time for clowns. For several generations, clowns were a source of joy and entertainment, but that seems to have been completely undone in just the last decade or so as clowns have become almost exclusively associated with horror. Two years ago, though, when I went to Universal Halloween Horror Nights, they had a killer clowns from outer space yeah, haunt, I and it that. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie to add to your Halloween But that's Halloween still a scary clown. List. It is. They're terrifying. They bundle you up in cocoons made of cotton candy. Yeah, it's real weird. It's a weird movie. Uh, but look, uh, that's not necessarily the case outside of the U.S. In fact, if you live in Northern Ireland and you're looking for work, there's currently a clown shortage on top of all the other shortages in the U.K. It's time to pursue your true calling. Bozo! <laughs> Northern Ireland, they need clowns. Yeah. So Are you going to rise to the challenge? You should. Someone should. Someone watching this in Northern Ireland should definitely do this. Yeah. Uh, here's the BBC. There's a lot more to being a clown than just putting on a big red nose and a big baggy pair of pants. That's according to David Duffy, co-owner of Duffy Circus, who is appealing for people from Northern Ireland to become clowns. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused a shortage of the performers as many returned to their home countries when the first lockdown came into force in early 2020, according to Mr. Duffy. But what makes a good clown? Quote, someone who's willing to make themselves vulnerable, says No Lean Fries Newman, known professionally as Silly Tilly. And not everybody likes to be laughed at, but for someone who is a clown, your worst nightmare would be to not be laughed at, Ms. Fries Newman told the BBC's Good Morning Ulster program. You have to be able to poke fun at yourself. It's not about poking fun at other people. That's a classic clown. The clowns had to leave because of Brexit. I mean, <laughs> it sounds like that's kind of maybe part of it. We didn't anticipate that no one would have joy or laughter when we voted for Brexit. Well, I so, I mean, Brexit is affecting uh, a lot of stuff. Know, music, like any any industry that involves uh, international touring. Yes, it used to be if you were uh, a British artist and you wanted to tour Europe, no problem. Yeah, you just go easy, or vice versa. And yeah. now that is absolutely absolutely not the case. And the same seems to be true for circus troops. And uh, you know, it sounds like, I mean, clowns they just go where the work is and. Uh, yeah. It's getting a little harder now. Those Cirque du Soleil clowns are really something, though. They really are. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're not totally clear on how popular clowning actually is in Europe compared to the U.S., but basically all of Northern Ireland's clowning talent has flooded into Europe over the past year because circuses were open over in Europe, but not in Northern Ireland. Different lockdowns. Uh, so the clowns, they went where the work was available. Yeah. And now Northern Ireland... They got no clowns. They need new clowns. They need to laugh again. And this news is not particularly useful for any of us outside of Northern Ireland, unless you can figure out a way to get over there on like a clown visa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's your clown visa. We've needed the clowns <laughs> here uh, twice before, or just once before, after the troubles. And now we've got a new set of troubles. Yeah. And we need clowns. We need to laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, you can still uh, troll your friends by sending them this article when they complain about their careers. <laughs> Well, I hear they're hiring over in Northern Ireland, you fucking clown. Here's just the job for you, bozo. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, here's some news from uh, last month that we missed the first time around, but it's still pretty incredible. Uh, Suriname is a country most people in the U.S. and probably a lot of other places would have a hell of a time pointing out on a map or just describing in any way. It's a tiny little country in South America bordered by Brazil, Guyana, French Guiana and the Atlantic Ocean. And they speak Dutch there on account of uh, being a former colony of the Netherlands. And like a lot of other countries in South America, they've had their fair share of corruption and violence and political unrest since gaining independence. 
But with all that out of the way, uh, we're just going to talk about how uh, Suriname's vice president, who also owns a football club, decided to field himself as a player during a major league tournament. By the way, this guy is 60 years old. <laughs> Here's the insider to explain. Imagine the scene. Kamala Harris playing for Inter Miami in the MLS, or Boris Johnson stepping out alongside Cristiano Ronaldo for Manchester United. Well, that's basically what happened in the South American nation of Suriname on Tuesday, as the country's vice president picked himself to play for Inter Mongo Tapo in one of the continent's biggest soccer competitions. Ronnie Brunswick, who is the club's owner, laced up and took to the field as a striker as his team faced off against Olympia in the CONCACAF League. Oh, that guy went as a striker, too. <laughs> Yeah, get the ball to me. <laughs> the 60-year-old even gave himself the captain's armband for the last <laughs> for the last 16 match, which was played at the Ronnie Brunswick Stadion, which is, you guessed it, named after the man himself. Things didn't go to plan, however, as the politician lasted just 54 minutes before, just? before subbing himself off, at which point the team was 3-0 to zero down. According to the Metro, when he left the field, one of the commentators covering the game said, now we can say we're 11 versus 11. Brunswick's departure didn't do all that much for Inter, though, as it conceded three more goals before the final whistle to lose 6-0. to zero. It's like if Donald Trump was like, I put me in the NHL. I'll be an enforcer. <laughs> I love smashing. <laughs> I love little boxing. <laughs> uh, so, Ronnie, the 60-year-old vice president of Suriname, played nearly an hour of professional soccer. I'm impressed. Because he owns the team. Uh, the stadium's named after him, and he wanted to do it. So he did. I mean, literally, you only live once. Yeah. Might as well. I mean, his team absolutely, is, they got crushed. They did very poorly. <laughs> uh, so you got to wonder how his teammates or employees felt about the little stunt. But it sounds like Ronnie had a blast, and if they say anything, you're fired. Yeah. So keep I'll, your mouth I'll, shut. Also, I'm the vice president, so like, I, there's even more things I could do to you. You had a great time playing with me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Ronnie. I we pay love, your fucking salary. We love you, Ronnie. Uh, yeah, he was even filmed after the game in the opposing team's locker room, shirtless and handing out wads of cash to the players. <laughs> uh, uh, to the opposing players? Yeah, just on camera. This is on, like, hey, it was good game, Instagram. Though. Hey, you guys you guys did great. Hey, you, you won fairly. You didn't tackle me. Here's a bunch of money. Yeah. Now, unsurprisingly, the league immediately launched an official investigation <laughs> about what the hell this was about, and uh, the result was both clubs being disqualified from the tournament and Ronnie Brunswick being banned from participating in CONCACAF competition in any capacity for three years. That's Does fine. that mean it's like he can't be there when his team plays, or he I, can't I, go on the field? He definitely can't go on the field. <laughs> Just three but, uh, more years to really hone my skills. Yeah, I don't know if he's allowed in the stadium during games. Uh, I, I don't know. I love it. It's his team. This is a great story. But, I mean, yeah, with all those sanctions on him, we're sure Ronnie can wait another three years before putting himself back out on the pitch again just yeah. for shits and giggles. But both the other team should have one of their politicians play as well as a striker. That's, yeah. Every, this should be a thing in all sports where yeah. one member of the team is an old man. I, we literally <laughs> just had the congressional baseball game or whatever. Yeah, which is... Very, it's very weird. Mm, yeah, uh, I, I didn't even know you could. Wa like, I don't know where to watch it or anything. I know, I know that it happened because I saw uh, people yeah. posting pictures of like C-SPAN, <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, yeah, in Nancy the crowd. Pelosi gambling on the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. Not well, really, I didn't but... gamble. My husband did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so Ronnie Brunswick. This apparently wasn't even the first time that he's done something like this. Uh, footage shared on Twitter supposedly shows him playing in a match against a Brazilian team like a decade ago. <laughs> Just put me in. Hey, come on. Look, maybe, maybe subbing me in is the difference. And he was only like 50 years old back then. So. Could have actually done something. Yeah. And it's not like Ronnie would have even been able to play in his team's next match anyway, since it was scheduled to take place outside Suriname. And he uh, can't actually leave the country because there's an active <laughs> Interpol warrant out for his arrest. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. This guy's got a, quite a history. Uh, here's more from that Insider article on... Suriname Vice President Ronnie Brunswick's very interesting past. Brunswick has been Suriname's Vice President since July 2020, having previously founded and led the rebel group Jungle Commando, which sought to free Suriname from military dictatorship during the Sur Surinamese interior war in the, in the late 1980s. Uh, in 1999, he was accused of cocaine trafficking by the Dutch government and was sentenced in absentia to eight years in prison. Then in 2005, he was suspended by Suriname's National Football Association after threatening a player on the pitch with a handgun. <laughs> it was like any given Sunday. 
Uh, Aiden, or last Boy Scout. I can't remember which, one, which movie it was. I don't know. Someone pulls a gun on a football player. I saw it when I was too young. Anyways, a New York Times profile from earlier this year described him as an elite paratrooper, a soccer player, a wanted bank robber, a guerrilla leader, a gold baron, and a father to at least 50 children during his lifetime. This guy is living. Yeah. L-I-V-I-N. Yeah. He also, uh, he's vice president. And the guy who's yeah, where's the president in all this? The president, so the president. It's this is actually a, a pretty historic like alliance in Suriname because the guy who's president was like a police chief back in the '80s and was literally hunting Ronnie Brunswick when like uh, the country was in a civil war. Like Ronnie Brunswick was like, hey, look at us now, right? He was like FBI's most wanted, and yeah, now they're uh, now they're teaming up. It's a very symbolic uh, union. And the, yeah, this Ronnie Brunswick guy, hell of a life. He grew up with like in a shack with no electricity. This is a great premise for an American uh, comedy series. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it, it sounds like people in Suriname generally seem to like him, but mostly because every time he shows up, he just hands out money. Yeah, he, there was. <laughs> He's like Pablo Escobar. There was like a just, video where he. No, we love Pablo Escobar. Every time he comes by, he hands out wads of cash. There's a video of him flying in a helicopter over some remote village, just like making it rain cash from the air. <laughs> this guy rules. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there's probably some pretty terrible shit going on in the background. I mean, but uh, probably, but like nothing that I found really like pointed to anything like specifically awful. Like I'm sure he he did some bad things in his past, but like he think- he sounds like a person where you ask like a kid what they would do if they had a billion dollars. Yeah. Like, I'd play soccer for the professional team. Yeah, this guy came from fucking nothing, and he, he really, he, he grabbed, the, real grabbed the bull riches. by the horns. Real <laughs> rags to riches, yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, I didn't have a chance to be a professional soccer player when I was younger, so... Well, look at uh, me now. I got older, I robbed a couple banks in Europe, and uh, bought a soccer team, and I put myself in. Yeah, which, which is like, look, at any point in time, he could just be like... He could have players on the team do like a scrimmage match, like an exhibition match against him, and but that'd this, be a lot of fun. But this is a real game. Because like, does he practice game. all the time? I don't know. Or is he just like, nah, I get the basics. I, I mean, got. Yeah, he did. I grew up playing. Sounds it. like he did pretty okay for a sixty-year-old man. Well, yeah, he's running around a lot. He didn't collapse on the field, so I guess that's a you know a big win. Yeah, good for him. I think so too. Having said that, I'm sure something horrific will come out where everyone's like, "You guys said this guy rocked." Yeah. Apologies in advance for that. Yeah. Based on the information we have, though, this guy sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and he, it's a good replacement for someone in politics outside of this country that we can cover now that Duterte is stepping down. Yeah. Rodrigo Duterte in a surprise move. He will not be seeking the vice presidential spot. Uh, and in a bit of weird news, it looks like Manny Pacquiao might be... Uh, this does pave the way for Manny Pacquiao uh, almost certainly being the next president of the Philippines. Um uh, very weird. Yeah, Duterte not seeking, because you only get one term in the Philippines, but mm-hmm. he was planning on doing a little, uh, like, switcheroo style where he would run as VP and then his president, something, would yeah, get sick yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. He says he's not doing that. And then also Duterte's daughter is not running either. So Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao. There you go. It's gonna He's going to knock the fuck out of uh, poverty and hunger. Yes. And corruption. Although every... Philippine politics is fucking wild. It's, they're all, it's just, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. Every, ev- like, inherently every, corrupt? Yeah, yeah. Every leader comes in and he's like, points out obvious corruption. Is like, someone needs to do something about this but shit. But not me. And then they get to power and it's just, they do their own corruption. Yeah. It's an endless cycle. Yeah, like lovely most, country. Though. Like most politics. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, before we get into the headlines after the show, it's time to tell you about today's sponsor, Upstart. If you're carrying a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt with no end in sight. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online, whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high-interest debt, or funding personal expenses. Over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than looking at credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash weird. That is upstart.com slash weird. Don't forget to use our URLs to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash weird. All right, now let's get into the weirdest, wildest, 
craziest headlines from around the world. You know what we haven't talked about yet? COVID-19. No, don't say it. It'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Man punched nurse after he said wife received COVID-19 vaccine without his permission, police said. Oh, my God. (laughs) This has a a lot of stuff going on in it. And this is another, this is Canada. This is in Canada? Yeah. Canada, like, the last couple years. This is Manitoba? This is Quebec. Oh, uh, this, uh, yeah. The French? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Wait, you, you gave my wife the vaccine without oh. asking me, her husband? I'm going to just beat the shit out of this This is not nurse. fromage. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, he apparently was under the impression that you needed the husband's permission to, uh, <laughs> to get the, the shot, and he would not have allowed it. Uh, there's a lot of questions here. But, yeah, basically Canada has gotten so much crazier in, like, the last two years. Yeah. Basically, Trump, something Trump did, like the, the fumes from Trump went up to Canada. They got the, the People's Party now, which is like all the fucking anti-mask, anti-vax psychos are in there. Well, it's just and, like uh, his, you know, everything allowed a lot of people both here and around the world to come out of the shadows yeah. and mask off. I mean, literally after literally COVID-19. Uh, but yeah, people weren't scared by their, uh, a lot of the times, fucked up beliefs anymore. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, it sucks that the illusion of Canada just being like letter, nice, letter K yeah. <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. Now, is now gone. I was like, oh, they're, they're just as fucking stupid and crazy as us. It's all started God with that it. Rob Ford guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And his brother is still like in politics there. Yeah. And he, in a lot of ways, like Rob Ford was actually extremely well liked. He yeah, was despite a, the cracks. He was a total mess of yeah. a human being, but he was well liked by his constituents. Because he never stopped working. His he brother, was always on crack, just his, working. His non-crack smoking, non-dead brother sounds like more of just a typical, like, conservative asshole. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Well, Canada, get your shit together. Yeah, because you, we used to look up to you, both literally and figuratively. You don't want no part of this, Canada. Look yeah. at what 200 and something years of this shit does to a country. It ages you. Yeah. They're going to fight the queen. You know, that, I'd actually be fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> that might I actually be cool. It's fucking stupid that they still have any association with that. Why is this, why is this bitch on your money? Get what if they had there. a revolutionary war now? Like right now? That would be, that'd be funny. Because I like... <laughs> that'd be funny. Well, because Britain, they'd be like, ah, fuck. Fine. Fine. You're free. Eh? You're not part of the Commonwealth Yeah, I don't anymore. think they'd even fight it. Like, yeah, like, like, uh, like who, what are we going to do? Actually go to fucking you war? Got, I'm, yeah. Every Commonwealth... Call their fucking bluff, Canada. Every Commonwealth country should just do that. Because, like, what are they going to do? They're yeah. going to fucking go to war with you for, like, like Australia. What are they going to do? Send troops halfway around the world? You think any fucking British person is... You think any Australian scared of a British person? No. 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 What they're scared of is emus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, kangaroos. They're, uh, you know, adorable, but also vicious. Yeah, and every, every ins- insect yeah, and reptile. What? No British person's going to want to even go to Australia. Like, what? They're just going to send their snakes. Yeah. We Brit- won't even be able to get on land. British people only go to Australia to retire. Yeah. They won't even be able to get on land. They're going to get just enveloped in box jellyfish yeah. before they even get to shore. <laughs> Ooh, look at this cute little octopus. Dad. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I think you should. Break up the uh, Commonwealth. England is so small. Yeah. <laughs> it's so small. Australia is very big. Very big. Yeah. <laughs> Same with Canada. Very big. Oscar Mayer offers NASA a wienermobile to transport moon astronauts. I mean, this is nothing more than marketing for Oscar Mayer, but yeah, the transport stuff from the 60s definitely looked like the wienermobile. I mean, the, the old transport... It's like which, Airstreams or something. Yeah, it's like it's just a fucking RV with like the NASA logo on it. It's very old. It needs an update. Well, I mean, the Airstream is a, cr- a classic design that needs to stay unaltered, Elliot. But I agree. But the wienermobile does still resemble that. It's a very like cylindrical... Have you, ever, have you ever seen the Wiener Mobile? Of course yeah. I have. I got a Wiener uh, whistle from it once. Yeah, it's like even as an adult, like you're just like, well, that's just a silly car. Who cares? But you see it in real life, like you're like, oh my god, it's the Wiener Mobile. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's, it's, it's really cool. huge. Yeah, you don't see a lot of like you know back when the Wiener Mobile <laughs> first uh, entered the scene, you had lots of you like buildings shaped as food yeah and stuff like that everything's like, a fucking box now it's e- stupid back then I, every decent sized city had an ice cream shop that was shaped like an ice cream cone yeah but like now it's only the Wienermobile yeah yeah I don't know how many Wienermobiles there are out there but uh, they're offering one to NASA This uh, get your astronauts from 
Mission Control down or whatever down to the rocket. It's just a short ride. The Wienermobile can handle it. They can definitely handle it, but NASA's going to be like, unless they were facing like some serious budget cuts, I doubt they'll like be needing the services uh, of the Wienermobile. <laughs> yeah. Our first manned mission to the moon in over 40 years, sponsored by Wiener Schnitzel. Different company. But the, the spirit. Oh, Oscar Mayer, my bad. Yeah. Uh, no, I think, well, they literally take them in Teslas now for SpaceX stuff. They they drive of them because they get Teslas. Yeah, of course they fucking do. So, but this is NASA. Yeah. And the Wiener Wheel runs on natural gas. It does. Yeah. <laughs> the natural gas from the people <laughs> that farts. enjoy Oscar Mayer wieners. Yes. Self-proclaimed shaman accused of starting California fire said she was trying to boil bear urine. Why? Yeah, she, what, well, why? she was thirsty. And that cleans it up? She was up in NorCal. How'd she get the urine? Uh, she said she found it. It was like a big puddle of bear urine, or at least what she thought was bear urine. And she was thirsty, but so she decided she was going to boil it to purify it. Turns which, out that was pure ethanol. Yeah, but like it's funny because like I think if you were to actually boil urine, the, the, the actual water content would evaporate. You'd be left with like concentrated... Uh, Urea. Yeah, just not very refreshing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, she apparently was trying to do that because she was thirsty and it started one of uh, one of uh, about a dozen current fires happening in the state of California. Uh, You know what? The the fires are horrific and bad and it's not going to stop ever. We're just going to keep getting more and more fires. But But they're all in NorCal, which is weird. This year specifically. Yeah. But I I. And more offended by the fact that the fires seem to be started in increasingly stupid ways. Yeah. Like gender reveal parties in boiling bear piss. Like, it's one thing if it's like, oh, yeah, we had a campfire and, like, the wind kicked up and some embers started. It's like, that sucks. You shouldn't be having campfires during fire season. Yeah. But, like, it makes sense, I guess. When things happen because of gender reveal parties and boiling bear piss, it's like, all right, look. This is ridiculous. The fires can potentially happen on their own with, like, yeah. lightning strikes and shit like that. So we don't need the help of shamans out there. It's a very fragile thing we've got here. It's really, we're running on the honor system. Any fucking asshole with a Bic lighter can set half the state on fire. Anytime with, with I no see effort. someone smoking a cigarette outside, like, at all, at pretty yeah. much at all at this point, it's it's very odd. Unless Because I don't go to bars anymore yeah. and haven't in two years because of the pandemic, not because I didn't stop drinking, but, like, Seeing someone with just a cigarette, like, outside, I'm like, what are you doing? The wind's going to take it. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's uh, very bad for you. Yeah, you shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Daughter of Hitler Mussolini accused of spreading Nazi propaganda in Brazil. Who could have seen this coming? What's the term where when you're named after something, you eventually, like, are guided towards that, like, career? It's like if someone was named, uh, you, after, like, like e- Elliot Cobbler. I mean, it's it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's another term for there's it. There's so, there is a term for it. the Germans probably got one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So you're 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 certainly uh, setting yourself up for some Nazi shit if your dad's name is literally Hitler Mussolini. First name Hitler, middle name Mussolini, last name some Portuguese shit. But yeah, uh, yeah this lady, and that's that's apparently been knowledge. But she's like, uh, she's she has a major position in the Brazilian government. And, uh, you know, under our old bud, Bolsonaro, she's she's part of his crew. And, uh, oh, my God, would you believe uh, the people, some people looked into her Facebook. It's just like full of like not even not even like, oh, oh, you call this Nazi, pro-? like literal, actual fucking Nazi propaganda from World War Two with like repurposed Texas. I'm stuff. just a big history buff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at my name and I got to thinking there's probably some meaning behind this. I should get one of those ancestry <laughs> tests. Yeah. I mean, well, uh, in Brazil, yeah. I We're, mean, yeah, actually, it <laughs> could be related. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, and, and also, it's like, it's fucking, it's actually illegal to <laughs> to, to use uh, Nazi iconography uh, in a lot of situations. So she may have actually broken the law here. So this is not a, uh, not a simple oh, mistake. Oh, I'm sure they'll be on this case real fast. Yeah, well, depending on who wins the next election. <laughs> Maybe. Which may or may not be legitimate. Who mm-hmm. knows? Very exciting things happening down there in Brazil. Yes. Glastonbury. Drug traces from on-site urination could harm rare eels. Please stop doing so much MDMA and cocaine. You are damaging the eels. Yeah, apparently, uh, like, 
the water in local streams and rivers. Yeah, for the for the month after Glastonbury is just pure like cocaine, MDMA, yeah, yeah all kinds of drugs. Yeah, it's uh, it's bad for the eels. The eels, they, they don't like it. See what that uh, shaman lady should do is go there and boil that water, and it brings it back to its pure form. I so I've always wondered about this because yeah, like they always talk about just like the the drug content in like sewage systems, and I'm like, if someone really wanted to, like, how difficult would how it be high could they get to like how, like, uh, well, that's why that's how Jenkum was invented. Yeah, but there's also I, I mean, there's uh, gold in sewage as well. Like, hmm. just, just tiny, out there pan mining, tiny little molecules. So it's like you could conceivably like yeah, go out there and harvest pan it. gold, yeah. drugs. There's there's gold. There are there's literal gold in that piss, and we're just flushing it down the toilet. Yeah, just go out there and pan it, Elliot. Yeah, this is your calling. Oh, there it is. If the clowning in Northern Ecstasy. Ireland fails, you can always go shit panning. Yeah. So Careers. There are careers out there for you, you folks who don't What's want the old that, 9 to 5. That was one of the uh, like indicators in the beginning of the pandemic of whether like a city uh, was doing better or worse. Because you, know, you can't test everybody. But they were literally testing the sewage yeah. and being like, yeah, there's traces of COVID-19. Oh, yeah. Poker. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, you know. All the identifying things are there inside your extra. They also use it to track, like, you know, well, I mean, the alcohol literal drug is, test. Uh, literal drug test is you piss in a fucking yeah. thing and they measure it and they're like, yeah. hey, I've been smoking weed. Hmm. Sorry, you can't work at Burger King anymore. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. A 96 year old former Nazi secretary who faces 11,000 counts of accessory to murder has been caught after escaping her care home on the day of her trial. I'm old. Please let me be. Listen, I only helped out a little bit with the Holocaust, but I'm old. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, did I leave my care home and try to escape? Get in the pit. Ugh, yeah. Um, I mean, this is the, I believe, the oldest She's person. She's the, the Robert Durst of Nazi Germany. Yeah, I think she is the oldest person from the Third Reich to be tried for uh, crimes. And you know what? Uh, I don't think that's an excuse. Mm -hmm. you, you had a nice life. Uh, She's going to blame this on cancel culture. Yeah. Oh, we're going to cancel this little old lady just because she uh, helped facilitate 11,000 murders? I mean, come on. It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. She's learned. She got... I'd like to assume that people have seen that I've grown as a woman. Like, the thing is, like, even if she gets convicted, this is Germany. Like, she's just probably going to be put on house arrest, and she's already fucking old, so it's like, it's not going to make any difference. Her body is its own house arrest. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it's just very strange. Like, just, lady, you've lived a long... She's running away very, very slowly. She's lived a long, consequence-free life, and she could die at any minute. Just accept responsibility, please. Yeah. Maybe some uh, restitution. She doesn't have anything. I'm sure she has some antiques that... Uh, oh, she <laughs> might. Yeah, that's true. Could be pretty valuable that you can't really sell in Germany. Does she have a, a storage locker anywhere around town? Uh, maybe look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Drunk and disorderly Nicolas Cage mistaken for homeless man thrown out of Vegas bar. Man. He's so many people's friends. Time. So many people's friends do not believe the stories they have from last weekend in Vegas. No, you don't understand. I was out fucking partying with Nick Cage. Yeah. Well, this is this is weird. There's a video of it. It was very it was like 11 a.m. And he was down at he was at like a steakhouse seemingly alone, just down in shots of very expensive booze and Why not? Uh, Take take his shoes off and uh, got a little got a little rowdy, and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, maybe he was maybe he was a little aggressive with people, challenging them to fight, but he wasn't actually going to fight anyone. He was just having a good time, and mm -hmm. uh, seems like he got home safe. So uh, I say leave Nicolas Cage alone. Yeah, the man deserves to let loose every once in a while. Yeah, I thought this was America. I thought this was I, Vegas of all places. Let the man. Well, it was enjoy 11 o'clock in the morning. I mean, there's if it a was reason. at night, people will be like, "All right, buddy, it's time to go home." There's a reason Vegas doesn't have windows or clocks anywhere. Time yeah. is meaningless there. Yeah. Drunk Turkish man reported missing joins search party and finds himself in forest. Hey, you guys looking for? Hey, is this a search party? I think I'll join up. I can help. Hello? Yeah, I like Hello? Uh, you know, interacting socially. With We're people. looking for a drunk guy. Oh, that's cool. I'm drunk too. I'll be able to find him way easier. I can pick up scent. I got. I can get into the mind of a drunk man. <laughs> Probably be. Hey, here he is. <laughs> yeah, this this happens like every couple years. There was another one a few years ago in Iceland where some tourist 
like they didn't they did the head count wrong on a bus. They didn't they so this this group spent hours just out in the middle of nowhere looking for her until they finally were like, maybe if we try calling her name. Hello, Belinda. Oh, that's like, me. Wait, that's me. Yeah. yeah, I've been here the whole time actually. Oops. But this was a really fun way to explore nature and for everyone to learn each other's names. Yeah. Yeah. Organizers seek to change Lee County, Florida to Bruce Lee County. Is there anything that ties Bruce Lee to this county in Florida? He's fucking awesome. But Everyone likes his movies. He's made a bunch of great movies. Yeah, I, sure. Sure, go for it. I don't care. It's and Florida. This, this way, they don't have to change any of the signage. It's Lee County. They just add the Lee Bruce county. to it. You don't even have to add the Bruce. It's just understood that uh, Lee County, named after the, the famous Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Good for them. Yeah, and I'd like to see anyone topple a statue of Bruce Lee. <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. The residents we, of this county will not let that happen. We need we need more bronze statues of martial arts legends up around the United States. Uh-huh. Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, Jet Li. Uh, not, uh, what's his name that went to Russia? Steven Seagal? Steven Seagal. I would let, I would enjoy a Steven Seagal uh, statue. Cost too much, cool. too big. A uh, lot of lot of bronze. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Please watch our most recent episodes. Uh, we got a story about uh, Alex Jones uh, oh. on the receiving end of oh, a geez. very substantial lawsuit. <laughs> they're trying to take away Infowars, and they're probably going to be <laughs> successful at it. Fuck. <laughs> Might be the end. Uh, and also, uh, YouTube banning anti-vax content. Check out both of those videos. Subscribe, comment, like, do all that stuff, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.